Alright, there's no troops guarding the silo now, so all that remains is to rush in and capture all the cities. Which, seeing as we've got multiple full HP infantry over here, shouldn't take too long. So, yeah, this mission is pretty much over. And I apologise if it takes a while. Yeah, this is a pretty long mission. There's still a few things left, though. I'm going to try and see if I can make a comeback on the bottom front. Yeah, I think it's about time. Those funds aren't really doing much fighter. And, though... Those helicopters are going to die. Just getting a little payback from what happened to my infantry back down there. Ah, oh, not quite enough to reach it. I just can't stand one single enemy being up there. Technically, I think we should have broken through that pipe earlier. And rush the bottom screen with, uh, screen. Damn it, I was thinking of Jewel Strike there. Where, yes, you get do get two screen spanning maps, but anyway, that slip on the side. I could have probably rushed the bottom area and maybe saved some of my units down there if I'd broken that pipe earlier, but I was a bit paranoid of those bombers coming through and attacking us, which would not be a good thing. Also, as you may have seen um, back in the last turn, allied APCs, like APCs that are from um, other armies, not yours, but that are allied with you, can't resupply your units. Right, now probably a perfect time to mention, just a general tip, always be incredibly careful when attacking Neo tanks because they have a tendency to fill your opponent's power meter very fast. This becomes particularly important in later missions. Particularly there's a certain black hole commander that we face later on in the campaign who we really, really want to avoid filling their power meter. And then of course there's Adam. You simply attack one of his Neo tanks and he'll probably get his super. He'll certainly get his normal, right there. No more artillery. And right, just as we finish up this mission, uh, I thought I'd just say uh, one more thing about Olaf, that just a random bit of trivia that I should probably mention now, because I'm not going to be using Olaf. any more in the campaign after this. And now I really don't know the reason behind this, it doesn't seem to make much sense to me, but no, I'll just make a bomber just because I want to get my unit count up a bit. In the Japanese version, Olaf had a white beard. His beard was changed to brown in the English version. I really have no idea why, but the interesting thing is, you can switch his beard back to white using the color edit feature. You have to unlock that for him. But once you do, you can actually use white bearded Olaf as a, effectively a costume change for him. Which is interesting that they've actually got the Japanese, his Japanese appearance still there, even in this version. And again, I still, if anyone has any idea why they changed it, please. Let me know, because I'm completely confused as to why. At this point, I... Th oh. Thankfully, we don't have much in his way at the moment, so this isn't really going to do anything.
why aren't those Neotanks moving? They're directly in line of fire of my Rocketon artillery. Why aren't they moving? Maybe it's because it's Flak. And he's an idiot. Right, almost done. Almost. Not quite. Oh, this thing's gonna survive, isn't it? Oh, on, on. Yeah, and speaking of Olaf's colour changes, um, of course, there's also one which not only switches his beard to white, but also makes his clothes red. I'll leave you to figure out what an incredibly obvious reference that is. But yeah, that can be pretty amusing to you sometimes. Now, around about this point, I thought, oh, screw it, I'll just use his normal, normal power anyway. I wanted to get Hyper Upgrade, but I'll have to settle for this one. Again, you will be seeing Hyper Upgrade later. And yes, Andy just said his classic Advance Wars 1 line. And we have this one in two turns. It does feel good getting this one out of the way. This was a long mission. The map actually isn't really all that big. It's mostly just how much combat there was. And probably one more thing I want to say before we finish this. Um, something I read on a walkthrough of this game that I read a long time ago. Like, I mean really a long time ago when I was first playing this which was recently after it came out, actually. So that's quite a long time ago. But uh, a walkthrough I read on, I read on the internet, uh, I apologise if somehow the person who made this walkthrough is listening to this. Uh, sorry for um, stealing this line. I don't even know if the walkthrough is still available, but basically, it was listing... Uh, it had a list of ideas for custom games, or like, map designer games, and one of them was simply titled Stress Relief, and its description, put any number of players against Olaf, set the weather to rain. I always found that hilarious. Pretty mean though. And let's end this with the ultimate overkill. And now... There we go. I wouldn't recommend launching the missile at our troops in this area though, because he'd probably kill all his own troops at the same time. So... Now, as you'll see here, I just made S rank by two points. Uh, not my best showing in this campaign, but oh well, at least it's an S rank. And now, now, the final mission has opened up for Blue Moon. But, of course, I'm not going to do that one until I've completed all these other three. So next up, we'll be doing Grit's second mission, Nature Walk. See you then.